Hello, and welcome back to another First Chapter Friday. I'm Miss Mary at the Dutch Middle School Library, and today we are going to read our final installment for Poetry Month, Jimmy and Me, by Jamie Adolph. This is another book written in verse, and luckily for us, there is actually a first chapter, so we're going to read that. So without further ado, let's begin. Boxes. Everywhere I look, I trip over them and land on more. Our life now, nothing but boxes. Everything we own, everything we can grab, miles of tape close up our past. Mom cries as that Bernie puts her arm around her. Mom pulls away, cutting another piece of tape. I watch it all happen like a silent news reporter, taking everything in, not able to really deal not able to deal with it all. I'm alone now, lost without dad, all alone, just me inside my head. Mom says everything is going to be different now. Mom says everything has changed. Mom says a lot more with her eyes than her mouth. Her eyes so sad all the time. Looking down, looking anywhere but here, now, this time that came so fast, snuck up on us and took away my dad, took away our life. I hate here. I hate now. I hate all these boxes. Whisper House. Our house used to be all loud and everything. Music blasting, singing, laughing. Now we have a whisper house. Just whispers everywhere. Mom thinks I can't hear what she's saying, but I can. Like how the bank is going to take our house, and what happened to all the money we had. Our life saving is gone in a flash, and how are we going to make it? Whispers drift in on pain and worry. Mom thinks it's going to be real hard on me, 13, growing up without a dad. The whispers are so loud, louder than the music used to be. That's hard to believe, but it's true. The music. That was everything. This house was music. Dad downstairs in the studio, dad looking for the next big thing, the new hot band, a hit so he could retire, always talking about retiring. But dad did well. He liked to teach me about the music biz. Just a little school for you, he say. Made his money with his music publishing deals, royalties from songs on the radio, I thought ASCAP was the name of Dad's best friend, the way he would tear open the envelopes to get his checks. Dad had bands that he got signed to record deals. He got paid for that, too. Dad did all right for himself, and for us. I always had the best stuff, the hottest games, and coolest toys. Dad was in his heyday when I was younger. He was rolling in the dough. I can still see him dropping to the floor, rolling around the carpet, laughing like he just said something so funny. Then he would get up quick and deliver one of his famous lines. You never know in this business. One day you're hot, one day you're not. So enjoy it while I got. Mom said he'd be a music producer till the day he died. Mom was right. Booming and thumping bass, sneaking under the soundproof walls, just enough to make your head start moving while you were watching TV, the soundtrack to my everyday pretty cool compared to what most dads do. I can still hear that bass sometimes, when it's quiet. Like now, I can feel it in my chest, in my ears, straining to hear the music from the studio, as quiet as dad is now. Still, like Brook Lawn Cemetery, dad's final resting place. Have you ever been to Electric Ladyland? I have. Dad took me once. Electric Lady Studios, downtown on 8th Street, used to be a club. Then Jimmy came along, waved his magic wand, and turned it into one of the greatest studios ever. Jimmy Hendrix, the greatest guitarist. Whoever lived. Dad's favorite artist of all time. I could listen to Jimmy all day and night. Jimmy and me are a lot alike. Left-handers who love to write poetry and music. Both of us falling in love at a very young age, falling in love with our six-string girls. 
Jimmy was part Cherokee. Dad said he was too. I can hear Dad telling me to get closer. Check out my high cheekbones. Dad's voice in my head sounding so clear. So close. So real. Dad and Jimmy were like brothers who never knew each other. Black hippies with big souls and even bigger smiles. Peace and love and all that other stuff nobody talks about anymore. Both died way before their time. Jimmy at 27. Dad made it to 49. Still, way too young to die. Jimmy did it to himself, or so they say. I think it was just a tragic mistake. Dad never saw it coming. Guess in the end, it doesn't matter, does it? Dad is dead. And Jimmy said, the magic carpet waits for you, so don't you be late. Is that what you ride when you die? I know Jimmy was talking about love, but I'm talking about death. On my mind all the time now. Maybe Dad and Jimmy are up in heaven having a big-ass jam session. Or maybe Dad's just dead. Cold and dark. No sound. No air. No nothing. Reality sucks. That's probably why we dream. Why our bodies need sleep so we can escape. Escape this earth at least for a little while. Every night we get to go away. Sleep is the only time I feel safe. The only time I can leave this place. This reality that feels like needles sticking into my flesh. This hell that is so hot it makes my hair sweat. Makes my mind melt. In my sleep I hear music. I see faces, songs, and smiles, and dad hugging me tight. Never letting me go, telling me to be strong, telling me not to give up hope. Sometimes I wake up crying. Sometimes I wish I didn't wake up at all. It comes in waves. Like the ocean. No, more like electricity. Shocking me, making me want to hurt myself or someone else. We interrupt this regularly scheduled program to bring you Keith James, destroying everything in his path, dubbed the Hurricane of Death. James is described as a seemingly shy kid who, by all accounts, just snapped. More on this story at 11. See? That's what I'm talking about. That was a wave. More like a tidal wave. Always hits when I least expect it. Thinking about death and revenge. Making someone else feel my pain, my hurt, makes me feel better, worse, makes me feel something. More on this story as it develops. Dad's words. You have to channel your energy, turn a negative into a positive. Dad's voice in my head all the time now freaks me out, but I like it. Channel your energy your pain, your hurt. Violence never solved a thing, just listen to what Jimmy sings. Violence never solved a thing. Maybe not, but it might feel good. Who am I kidding? Don't have the stones to really do something. Not like in rolling, but balls, cojones. I'm not a lover or a fighter. I'm just a singer in a rock and roll band. Well, not exactly. I try to be a singer. Guitar player too, but no band. You need to talk to people, make friends to start a band. Life isn't a spectator sport. Dad talking again. Giving out wisdom from beyond the grave. See what happens when you get in the game. You get yourself shot. Shot dead. That's what happens. Sorry, Dad. I didn't mean that. Sometimes it hits me. It was my fault. I killed my dad. It hits me hard and takes so long to go away. Hours trying to justify that I had nothing to do with it. Hours trying to understand how I could have let this happen to him. I couldn't even save my own dad. I didn't do a damn thing. I should have woken up. Mom should have woke me up. 
told me death was going out. I shouldn't have gone to bed that night. I should have just stayed up. I should have just stayed up until everyone was safe, until I knew for sure Jack was okay. I should have stopped him. I could have stopped him. Guilt stops me cold. It hits me hard. It was my fault. I killed my dad. And that is the end of the first chapter of Jimmy and Me by Jamie Adolph. As always, this title is available for checkout from the Dutcher Middle School Library. And if you go online, you can view what other poetry selections we have available as well. As always, thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great